Going back now, I just want to cover uh, current affairs. When you were studying and when you were conducting your research 30, 35 uh, years ago, information was not as readily available, shall we say, as it is today. You, I mean, your research would probably involve you going to a library at the time and, and reading a book, whereas now you've got the internet, you've got blogs, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got emails, you've got a billion plus websites. In fact, now we've got the exact opposite problem that you would probably face 30 years ago where we've got too much information, too much readily information and not of the same quality. Now my question is, how do you filter that information? Because we can waste a lot of time, a lot of hours of our life looking for something and, and, and end up doing nothing. So how should we filter the information that we find when we go to find it? That's a great question. Um, when I did start in my research 30, almost eight years ago, um, books, that was your game. And libraries, that was the name. And uh, I lived in libraries. I literally read bookshelves. And, um, and I did everything I could. I'd collect books and read them and buy books and read them and this kind of thing. Uh, in the last decade or so, since we've had Google, and things of that nature, search uh, systems, we now can access things pretty quickly and concisely, which is a great asset in speed and time. We can copy things instead of having to write things. I used to have to do everything by hand on little cards. It was just a lot of tedious work. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But what I attempt to do is I try to go back to the classics, the, the people who originate the new ideas in any field. I usually go back to the originators and work my way forward. And so if you read a discipline about something, you look at the bibliography, the bibliography will take you back and you look for the common threads in the various texts and they'll eventually take you back to the originator and I go to the originator okay. because I'm interested in the creative mind that observed those things. I set out when I was a teenager to, um, to devour and study every great mind that I was able to get on to all the Nobel Prize winners, etc. And I made summaries of what were the common threads of these great beings. And um, one of them was originality. So I set out and said, all right, I want to do something that's original, that solves the most amount of problems in humanity that's original, that's never been done before. And so then I want to go to the people who have been the most original, unborrowed visionaries and find out what they did and how they did it and what was their history. So I start going and probing through the literature to go back to the originers of different fields, whether it be Gilbert and magnetism or whether it be Wegener and plate tectonics or whether it be Cantor and set theory, you know, whatever it is, general the the theory of relativity by Einstein, whatever field, I want to go to the people that had the ahas and look at their biographies and look at their lives to then own those traits in me, see where I do that in my own life and see the advantages that I have because of that. And then look inside and don't stop. Kind of like John Nash in The Beautiful Mind, he was looking around for algorithms on penguin walks or, or pigeon walks or whatever. He was looking for patterns that had never been seen before. I've spent the last 38 years looking for patterns that nobody's seen and finding original patterns. And that is um, what I think awakens that. And, and so now, our, our, with that in mind, I can now search information much more efficiently. I also, because I'm cross and interdisciplinary, and I have 276 different disciplines I've done writings on and work in and research on, now there are certain laws that apply to all of them. And the more I understand those laws, the more I can filter through the stuff that's not real and get to the stuff that appears to be real. Because a certain law will keep repeating itself in all the disciplines. Uh, the law of the one and the many. Uh, is one of the laws that go through all the disciplines. So far, every discipline, 276, that's there. So once I know that, I, I may be learning new language and new uh, linguistics around that particular discipline, but the law is still there and I just apply the law now. And that allows me to retain the information. I also used to take all of my information and put on an index cards and put it on conical images between the law of the one and the many on the image. And I'd sort information to there so I would have a photographic mind of where everything fit. And that allowed me to retain the information and allow me to sort the information and access the information whenever I need it. And it's, I'm amazed. Sometimes I'll be speaking and all of a sudden I'll access information 25 years ago. And I'll just, boom, it's there because I've got images of it.